In this episode I'm going to show you how to create a panoramic HDI image out of Lightroom. For this video I'm going to use those shots you can see down here. As you can see those are quite a lot of images. First I'm going to combine all the HDR pictures and then I'm going to merge them together in a panoramic image. So I'm going to select the first three of an HDR series, right click and go to Photo Merge and HDR. I'm going to repeat this process for all the remaining images that you can see down here. Now I have all the HDR images Lightroom has processed, but before I go and continue with the panoramic image, I'm going to select one of those and start editing it a little bit. And once I finished editing one, I can um, copy the style of this particular image to every other HDR shot, so that I have the same sharpness, colors and lens correction on all the images. This way I don't get any trouble when I combine them into a panoramic image. As always I'm starting with the camera calibration profile. Here I'm going with the landscape profile because it gives the image a nice autumn color look. Then I'm going to the lens correction settings and check those two boxes. Then I'm going to adjust the exposure a bit because I think it might be too bright this way. Then I start by selecting all of the images and press sync so the settings are all the same on every single image. Once that is finished I can start merging it into a panoramic image. Now I can use the boundary warp um, to fill in those white gaps here. And once this process is finished, we got our HDR panorama image right here. I'm going to continue this video now so you can see the whole post-processing workflow I use for this image. The first thing I want to do is correct the panoramic distortion you can see here. It's going like a curve, so I, am tr I try to get a straight line through the image. I won't be cropping out that upper white part here be because I think I can fix it with the content aware fill of Photoshop later. I'm going to reduce the saturation of the blue colors. As you can see in the sky, the blue is just too much. So I'm going to the saturation menu and just down the blue tone. And I also want to bring up some of the orange color tones and also the yellow ones. To give the image a bit more of a warmer look I'm going to the split toning setting and change the highlight color to something a bit more yellowish. And as always I'm sharpening quite a lot. And I might apply a radial filter for the waterfall. I'm going to add a bit more of clarity in this area here. I'm also going to apply a radial filter in the clouds over here. Then I'm going to apply a graduated filter in the upper corner here to make the sky a bit darker because it looks unreal. And the same thing I will be doing on the left side. Now in Photoshop the first thing I am going to do is fill those um, white spaces 
Therefore I'm going to duplicate the background layer by hitting Ctrl J and then I am going to press L for the lesser tool and select this white area here and then I'm basically filling it with the content aware the same thing I will be doing for the upper area in the sky now I don't like how there's still a curve here in the ocean so I'm going to fix it with the adaptive right angle filter Now there appeared new gaps which I need to fill again. Therefore just select the lesser tool and fill it with the content aware fill method. Then I'm going to remove those sensor spots. Therefore I'm using the spot healing brush. I just have to click the spots and they disappear. Once that is finished, I am going to start adding filters of the Nick collection. The first one I'm going for is the polarization filter. And I just up the strength here to see what it would look like. Now I don't like um, what the filter did to the color of the waterfall here, so I'm going to mask it out with the layer mask. I'm going to merge those two layers by hitting Ctrl E. And then I'm going to apply another color effects filter. I think I might add a bit of dynamic contrast with the Bro contrast filter here. As you can see in the sky it changes quite dramatically. I think I need to mask out some of the areas because I don't like how the filter affected those like those rocks in the right corner here now one more filter I'm going to apply is the classical soft focus of the neck collection And again I'm masking out areas which I don't want to be affected by the filter. Okay, I think this is it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Um, thank you for watching.